Andy Bengal, owner of Bengal Electric. I've been doing electrical work for 27 years, just a few days. I've been in construction <laughs> for more than that, probably 30 years. I just want to give a demonstration on basic some electrical work for stuff that a lot of you are seeing out in the field. Uh, one of my favorite tools that we absolutely, you, all of us should have, especially in remodeling. Yesterday going across some of the wires and stuff is, you know, a little tester like this. You can see you come up to it and it's telling if it's hot. That means don't freaking cut the wires, right? Because it'll blow stuff up. What's cool about this, what I recommend buying too, is it actually has a tape measure laser on it as well. So it's a two-in-one deal, works great. I can shoot across and gives me the measurements in feet, inches, whatever you want. If you're investing it, I think this, of course, is a Klein tools, because that's all we use Klein. is Klein tools. If it doesn't say Klein, I don't even know how to use it. <laughs> this thing is hot now, right? What do we do now to, to turn this off, go to the breaker panel, right? You want to hold it on the tester over there? This is kind of something we'll do in the field is I'll have him on one end of the <clears throat> circuit, or we have a great tester like this that plugs in, which I kind of recommend for all of us as well. Now we can tell if the circuit's hot, the outlet's hot. You push this button, and now I can go through the panel, and again, Klein Tools, hashtag Klein Tools, Bengal Electric. <laughs> we roll through here, I don't, I don't know if you can see, but it'll turn red when that circuit, it tells you what breaker it's on. Oh, that's very... It's really cool so you're not going through the whole house and flipping all the breakers. There it is. Because sometimes it, it does do that. Like, to make it work the best is actually taking the cover off and going right on the wires, because some of these breakers, it just doesn't pick it up perfectly. But we have the tester on, and we scroll through the breaker panel, and here it gets to this one. Like, it's very finicky. And now the breaker's off, everything's still green on the panel. So you can see on here now, it doesn't light up red. Got it. But then the big thing I, I really want everybody to hear is when we do turn these breakers back on, it has happened where this thing can blow up in your face. Highly, highly recommend when you turn these breakers on, we always stand to the side. I don't care which side they're on, but get as far away as you can because you can't trust these things. It's just a mechanical device that can easily blow up in your face. And I mean, that's metal, hot metal, arcing metal that can blow up on your face. <laughs> Coming out of these panels, we call them branch circuits. So right now we got this wire coming across. This would be considered a branch circuit to this, to this wall. In a home, you'll have definitely one branch circuit feeding a bathroom. And typically you have at least a couple bathrooms, so you have two branch circuits for a bathroom. Every single kitchen in your house has to have two branch circuits. And each of them on a GFCI, GFCI breaker. And this is just code. Now that's stuff that you won't be, really have to get involved in, but it's just understanding when you have these <clears throat> home runs coming to an area, we call them home runs, consider branch circuits. Right now it is hot. And <clears throat> another great tool we use, of course, is a meter. But this mighty tool right here, we use out in the field all the time to drill our holes. Rigid is close, <laughs> it's orange and black. All right, so this bad boy we use for drilling the holes. All right, so then we will feed our wires through there, mount our boxes. Paddle bits were great, but this bad boy, you can see when you're roughing in a house, I'll have Kenneth or Grayson just start drilling holes. We know where usually the, typically the boxes are, we're gonna have to drill holes. One person will be drilling, next person laying boxes, and we just go to town. If you're not on 16s or you're in a tight space, how are you getting your holes then? We'll t pull up paddle bits a lot of times and use them if we have to, or, or what we do too is just go up and over. So if it's like triple stacked, mm -hmm. typically we'll just go up in the attic or up above or below and just go around and drop it in. Because it's much cheaper and more efficient to just go up and over and then try and drill through, through. four or five gotcha. different areas or studs. Uh, <clears throat> imagine drywall being on this wall and everybody's like, well, get the wires down the wall. And then we start, you can see sometimes we have to you know, cut out a lot of drywall just to get our holes drilled. We try to take out as little as possible and <laughs> do as much damage, but sometimes it's just impossible. You really yeah. can't feed wires through a stud wall like this if you got ceiling and a um, drywall on the, top, um, on the side. You're gonna have to some way get your paddle bit through here, but then you still got to get a hold of the wire. That's why there's times where we have to cut pieces out from top and bottom because it's just impossible to do it. Especially on outside walls, you got your rafters coming in. Is there a notching or boring requirement? Do you just take and put that anywhere? You can put it anywhere you want. You want your holes to be centered of, of the joist as mm -hmm. much as possible. And if there are times where we do have to have the, the holes a little bit closer 
to the front of the stud, but then they have these um, things called nail plates. I'm sorry, maybe some of you have seen them, but you just staple them on there. So this is when people are putting their screws in from the drywall or cabinets, it'll hit the metal and it won't go into our wire. That's a requirement anywhere where your holes have to be or end up being close. They use that for plumbing and electrical, right? The yep. strike plates. Yep. Okay. Typically, from the box, you got your box here and it's mounted. You have to have your first staple within 18, 18 inches. Okay. Within 18 inches and then from well, there about six every feet. six feet. Okay. Typically, I don't even, I, mean, I don't even, I know those are the measurements, but normally I'm just looking at how loose it is, right? We just don't want the, this wire flopping around in here. And when they start hit, putting drywall on, this wire doesn't all of a sudden flip over here or on this side. It's not dangling out like this, right? I want to get one close, another one here. Now you can see the wires tighten the wall. It makes it easier for the people putting insulation as well. There's a maximum distance, right? But is there a yep. minimum? So can you just there is no pop, minimum. pop, 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 if you yeah. want. <laughs> if you want, when you get this new Milwaukee nail gun that we just got, the guys <laughs> have so much fun with it because it's literally a nail gun that goes over the top of the staple, mm -hmm. covers it or keeps it from getting pinched by the nail because it's got guards on it. But I mean, you can just sit there. That tool right there is a little expensive, but the amount of time we save by hitting up these nails instead of hitting it with a hammer. Here's the old, old way, which is not the old way. We still do it. And so we'll take it on here and then just pound it on there to cut, to protect the wire and keep it from falling out of the walls. Gotcha. The big thing is that the, the prettier it looks, just like all of us in, the, in our industry, the prettier it looks, the easier it is for the past inspections. Pretty. You know, prettier. On. You like that? Pretty. Let me look the at neater, all these pretty people. <laughs> the, because that's what inspectors see that you care about your work. Stuff isn't just looking like some rookie put it in and didn't care, right? And I will um, say a lot of our inspectors, we, we become familiar with them as time goes on. And if they walk into a dangling mess, and instead of talking to you, right? And really going quickly through your stuff. Go ahead. They're gonna really hit you hard. It does, it does matter. But this thing has this cool, cool guard on here. And you just, once you push this down or put the wire in there, it knows how many wires are in here as well. So I can have like three, four wires in there, push it down, done, nothing. Just go up to it and hit it. It's pretty, it's pretty amazing. They just came out these, I don't know, a few months ago. Definitely worth the time or time saving. Battery operated. Battery yeah. operated, 1,600 square feet yeah. up and down. And within three days, probably about over 15 hours, we had the whole thing roughed in with like this nail gun just saved a huge awesome. amount of time. So having the right tools makes a huge difference. Huge in. difference. Having, yeah. having the right auger, using something like this instead of just a regular drill, that just, it's gonna wear that thing out. We can just plow through drilling these holes. Having the right safety tools, as far as making sure when you, again, go into these remodels, yeah. I just hate seeing somebody get hurt. Yeah. And the big thing is we've, we've all probably done it. We've touched the black wire and get zapped by it. That's 120 volts. It hurts, pushes you back. But <clears throat> right now there's electricity going through the circuit, right? You have a black and a white wire. If you get in between that white wire, let's say, I'm trying to explain, say you say this is well right here you get in between there's a white wire here and white wire here on this this outlet right if you literally go in between there and touch that and hold it and this thing's running like a radio even you got that amperage that's going through that circuit that amperage is what's going through the white wire you get in between there that is the part that can kill you 10 milliamps that's it 10 milliamps can kill you wow. the voltage yes hurts and it can definitely knock you on your butt but getting in between that white wire is it yeah. can it can be fatal. Yeah. Um, if you get blasted really hard, do not wait that long. I and mean, if you get hit that hard, it can offset your heartbeat. Get to the doctor, get to the hospital, whatever it is, because there's been people that literally get shocked. They think they're fine, go home, go to sleep, never wake up, because now their heartbeat's out of rhythm. And I mean, it's serious stuff. I try and tell these guys all the time, it's not a joke. The last thing I want to see is anybody get hurt. It's it's scary stuff. You can't, you can't see it. And that's why I highly recommend all of you, I don't know where I put it, getting a tester. There's nothing, it's like 20 bucks. 20 bucks can save your life, seriously. Or don't touch it. Or don't touch <laughs> it. That's right. And, and turning the breakers off, that's obviously the right thing to do. But it's, sometimes in our industry, we just can't. There's yeah. stuff that I have to do hot because I don't want to shut down a whole animal clinic. Been there doing that stuff. And medical buildings, been in there where we just have to do it hot. But do you still test even though you've 
pop the breaker? Oh, for right. sure. Because they could still be hot for some reason or another, right? Or labeled wrong or something. Right? 100%. Yeah. And that's why like these, this tester, you can see that if it's turned off, the lights are off. But test every one. Sometimes we've seen it where you're going down a room and you think that whole circuit's turned off. You're like, oh, we just turned off the bedroom. Well, they fed in from another circuit and now another outlet's hot. You thought it was dead and you get shocked. Gotcha. It's, it's, I can't say enough how crucial and critical it is to have a tester with you. It's number one. I mean, that's honestly the number one tool to have when it comes to electrical work. They usually light up, you put your battery in it, plug it in, and it'll light up and blink at you. Hey, you're charging. Yep. So that's an easy way to, if you don't have a tester, you actually have it with you. Ah, gotcha. Now. Plug in the charger. Your charger. Yep. You use Something we used to do too is just put a radio in. Plug in a radio and get that thing cranked up, and then you can kind of go through and flip breakers and once the radio goes off, you know it's dead, but that's, yeah. that's a simple, easy way if you don't have a tester. Something else that I see a lot. So like this is, this is 12 two wire. This is, this is common what they'll see out in the field because it's residential? Yep. What is this? This is 12 two Romex. This is rated for, it's three wires in here. You got your black, which is your hot, then you got your ground, and then your neutral. This is the one I'm talking about. Like if I split this in half, say it's still going, you kind of get in between here and hold this thing, now you're, you're the path. That's where the amperage is now going through you and can do some damage. damage. Got it. If you're touching the edge of it, say the edge of it was showing and you bump it. Really getting in between two, that'll, that'll get you. That'll get you. Yep. Yep. Like if, if you got in between here and started touching this right now, it'll blast you. So don't mess with broken wires then because you just, okay. You just don't know, right? Again, you can't see it. But so this is 12 2 wire. This is your typical wire that's going to all your outlets inside the home or even some areas around here, Fairhope's one of them, they want 12-2 or even ran to your switches, your lighting circuits Real as well. Real quick, 12-2 means what? This is the 12-gauge wire, and then they consider, even though there's three wires in here, because every white, you're like, this is 12-2, uh, so they only count the black and white. The gotcha. ground, they don't count because it's in every single Romex or... The ground is your cop, it's not wire. Exactly. Right. Okay. Yep. So they don't count it. You'll have 12, 2, 12, 3, then it'll be black, uh, red, and white. We use those for different circuits as well. And then what's this used for? What areas? This is typically for all your outlets in your home. But what it's for is anything 20 amps and under. You can't That's run this thing to, to a water heater. This thing is not rated for 30 amps. Just like when you have people that are like, well, my breaker at the house is on a, on a 20 amp breaker. And the breaker keeps tripping. We keep plugging stuff in, the breakers trip. Well, we're gonna put a bigger breaker in there, right? We've all heard that instead of a 20, they'll put a 25 or a 30. But now what you've done is this wire's only rated for 20 amps. Now you've just made this thing go up to 30 amps because the breaker is only gonna go until it hits 30 amps, right? So if that, now the wire's carrying 30 amps, this thing is gonna start to burn up, it's gonna melt, and that's how house fires start. It's, it's not rated for 30 amps. It can only go 20 amps. If you want something to be on 30 amp circuit, it needs more power, then you need to get to a 10-2 or 10-3, a bigger wire with a bigger breaker. That's rated for 20. 20. If, if you're looking at your panel, how do you know what the panel's rated for? Just on site, is it labeled? Are there every breaker, numbers on the breaker? So every breaker will say it's 20, it's, the smallest is 15. And then you have yep. a 20 amp breaker, then you have 30, 35, 40, and so on up. Most panels that come into a home, your house panels inside, those are 100 amps going into that panel. This little, there's a little number on here, 20, 20, you've got at 60 over here as well. Yep. That's the amperage? That's the amperage. Oh, gotcha. The 60 amp breaker is rated for a number six wire. It can take a number six, it can't go up higher than a number six. It can. Or it can, go, it can go higher than the number six, but it can't, it can't go, go lower. lower. So the lower six. the gauge, the lower the number, the, the actual thicker, right? It's, it, it's weird how they, they determine that because yeah. it, goes, it goes 12, 10, 8, 6, and then 2, and then it starts going to 1, one. 2, 3. It's, it's kind of by, by the dimensions. The yellow is interior, and then you have a 12, 2 gray for exterior. Is that right? Correct. So there's a 12, 2 UF. UF is rated for underground and doesn't need piping. So you can just run that even in concrete. It's rated to not have any conduit or enclosing in, in conduit. This is only rated for indoors. 
Another common mistake, people will take this and then run it to their air conditioner. That's illegal. This insulation and the insulation on here is not rated for water or weather conditions. It'll deteriorate. I'm sure maybe you've seen it where you pull it out of something that's been outside and it just starts to fall apart. It's not rated for it. You got to use THHN. That's another type of insulation that's made for wet locations. And they can sit in water all day long. If I'm running stuff underground to a, a shed or a garage, it's THHN, stranded or solid. This is solid wire. Stranded is many little strands in be there, wo woven together. But that's a great point. This is this Romex, it's called um, NM, this is the official name. Romex is what a lot of us call it, but it's only for indoors. Gotcha. Something we, you've seen probably in the other buildings is you use MC cable. So that's got, it's called metal clad. Mm -hmm. So that metal clad is protecting that wire inside, inside of it. But again, that's not rated to be outside. Some of us do it, but it, it is illegal. You said not rated for outside, literally meaning exterior or because per se my shop. That's what yep. they told me to get for my shop is uh, MC-12-2 to run my receptacles and stuff inside my shop. Is it illegal to use? Well, it's inside of it. That's why I'm saying. Is it literally exterior we're talking about? Exterior. Okay. Yep. Only exterior. Okay. Yep.